Good morning. How the devil are you doing this fine day? Me? Oh, you know, there's a smile on my face, a long forgotten song in my head and vengeance in my heart. Pretty much the same as always, really. So without further ado, let us let me post that question of the day, roll the intro and get this show on the road. <laughs> Welcome to The Great Car Show. I'm your host, Mark Anthony. It's Wednesday, the 6th of April, and as that remarkably persistent guy just said, welcome to The Great Car Show. I am your host, Mark Anthony. Am I the, the voice of the global demolin, demolition industry? Well, modesty forbids me from commenting, but can you hear another one? Uh, in today's show, a new school, old school, no school. Uh, we're taking the sting out of site safety with an exclusive prize giveaway. We're heading for France for an epic bridge demolition. Thompson's of Prudhoe drops the down mini column. And if we've got a little bit of time at the end of the show, we'll be calling back to Stevenage to check on the progress of the Swingate House demolition that came so close to tragedy two weeks ago. We'll get to all of that in just a second. But first, let's see who among the rich and the shameless will be celebrating a birthday. On this day of days. Happy birthday! And it's many happy returns to Italian painter Raphael. I wonder if he realised that he'd one day be so famous they'd eventually name a Ninja Turtle after him. Um, happy birthday also to Northern Ireland loyalist pol uh, politician and firebrand Dr Ian Paisley, to Star Wars actor Billy D. Williams and TV magician Paul Daniels. Paul Daniels would like this show. Not a lot. Uh, to impressionist Rory Bremner, comedy actor Paul Rudd, and to actor-turned-director Mr. Zach Braff, many happy returns to them, one and all. <laughs> I know we normally start with the news, but today, just to ring the changes, I would like to tell you a story. Now, you know that I often bring, uh, bang the drum about attracting young people into this industry. Just this week, I've bemoaned the fact that each accident, fatality, investigation and prosecution makes it harder and harder to attract young people into the fold. During my various rants and discussions, I often aim my criticism at demolition companies, demolition trade organisations and the training providers that supposedly support them. But they are not solely to blame. On the 13th and the 14th of this month, Kent Demolition will be uh, throwing open its doors on a new facility down in Rutum in Kent. The change in location reflects the opening of a new division, Kent Machines, which will be offering a whole range of new equipment for sale, hire or lease. To mark these two open days, the managing director, my mate Dave Paget, has written to all of the local schools in and around the area, offering to allow teachers and students the opportunity to get among the diggers and hopefully inspire a few future demolition or construction workers. A representative of the CITB will also be on hand to talk about apprenticeships within the sector. Having written to all the schools well in advance and then having followed up by email and telephone, how many responses do you think Dave Paget received? None. Not even a no thank you. That's not just deeply disappointing, it's bloody rude. And, and one of the schools in question is actually in the same road as the new Kent Demolition Kent Machines Depot. So a couple of things. First of all, for all my talk about the need to inspire future generations, it appears that teachers and schools are as big an obstacle as the industry's often questionable image. Secondly, and far more importantly, I am not willing to allow this open invitation to go to waste. I am going to be at the open day on the 13th of April with a video camera in tow. I figure if the mountain won't come to Mohammed, then we'll film Mohammed and post it through the, uh, the mountain's sorting letterbox if needs be. Uh, now, if my presence isn't enough to make you drop everything and head for Kent on the 13th of April, uh, allow me to sweeten the deal even further. Dave Paget assures me that there will be bacon rolls on offer. As my wife will testify, I've been known to drive for miles on the mere promise of bacon. So get that date in your diary, 13 and 14 of April at number one, Borough Green Road, Rutum in Kent. That's tn 57 rd if your sat nav is listening i sincerely hope to see you there uh, I, I should be very easy to spot i'll be the one juggling the video camera and the bacon roll Just fix 
fixated on bacon rolls now. Uh, OK, it's time to talk PPE. And it's also time for one of you to be in with a chance of winning a site safety box filled with PPE, courtesy of our friends over at Wasp Site Safety. So let's start by getting Marcus Taylor from Wasp Site Safety on the show. Good morning, Marcus. Morning, Mark. How are you? I'm uh, very well indeed. Thank you very much indeed for uh, for joining us today. We will get to the competition in just a second, uh, but there has been a fundamental change in PPE regulations, has there not? And you are the expert in all these things. So, what are the changes in those regulations? Yeah. So this is a very much fundamental change. Thirty years in the making. This update has come from. This is updating the 1992 PPE R regulations. Um, I think the most important thing to say is it's an extension of current duties and responsibilities. So, where prior employers only had responsibility to provide PPE for contracted workers, people who are you know absolute employees of that company. Now that's been extended to uh, casual workers. Uh, what they describe, the PP, uh, the HSC describe as LIM B workers. So that's anybody who is a temporary member of staff, who's a casual member of staff, an agency worker, for example, on site. So I think what to take, we need to take away from this is that HSE are more than ever cracking down on PPE, making sure that people are taking safety seriously and making sure that people are being protected on site, which at the end of the day is what we all want. So, I mean, effectively, it is people that are employing agency workers um, who mm. need to be aware of these new regulations. And obviously, there are an awful lot of uh, agency workers out there as well. I, one thing that does strike me, uh, there's an awful lot of um, self-employed operators, uh, equipment mm. operators out there as well. But I guess if they're self-employed, then the onus still rests upon them, does it? Yeah, so I was reading the HSC requirements this morning and self-employed uh, tradespeople, the onus still is on them to provide their own PPE. However, I think... What HSE have done well here in, in their respect is that there's a lot of grey area. I think when you're operating on site, uh, if someone, you know, uh, goes missing for a week and you need somebody on site, you might get someone in who's a friend who's self-employed. And then are they a casual worker on your site? Are they self-employed, you know, operating on somebody else's site? So I think it's really important to cover those grey areas with sort of one rule. And I think what what we found here is that HC are leaning more and more to it being the employer's responsibility or the site owner's responsibility to provide the PPE. Absolutely. Well, your timing is perfect because I, we, I think we can all agree that we all need PPE. Um, and there's only one thing better than PPE. That's free PPE. <laughs> you're, you're currently running a competition right now to win one of your damn fine uh, site safety boxes. And if anyone hasn't seen it, that's what the site safety box looks like. Um, how do viewers go about entering and what do they need to do to take part? Yeah, absolutely. So our site safety box is an all in one package for safety work where it's got all of the essential items you need to be site compliant bar safety boots because we can't guess your shoe size. Uh, other than that, it's got, you know, your high vis vest, your hard hats, as you can see there, your safety gloves. So you're for 90 percent of general sites, you're going to be site compliant if you've got our equipment to enter to win one of these free competitions. You need to do two things. Go to at wasp site safety on Instagram follow our page and answer the question that I've posted in our story. Now, uh, it, it relates to what we've just been talking about with these HSE updates, so it shouldn't be too much of a difficult one, but go to the page, follow the page and answer the question. OK, I'm going to remind people of that a bit later in the show, but uh, when Brilliant. will you announce the winner? Uh, we'll announce the winner in 24 hours. The question can be live in 24 hours. We'll select a entrant at random as long as they've got the question correct. And you'll be with a, a free site safety box, which you can keep yourself or you can provide to, say, a casual member of staff who's just joined your site. I think um, one thing that the site safety box provides is that peace of mind to know I've given whoever's working on my site a box that has the absolute essentials they need to be safe. And, th and that's what we're trying to do with our product. Yeah, we were, we were speaking off air about that very thing. I, I mean, mm -hmm. not that I'm I'm in the process of trying to sell um, your products. But if, <laughs> if, if I was running a site to have a few of those boxes lying around, because even site visitors, you know, where you've got somebody coming in to, to, to do a quick check around or a local person or even school children or whatever it might be, to have a few of those lying around on the uh, on the off chance that you need them. It's not a bad place to be, is it? That's exactly right. I mean, whether it's for site visitors, if you're doing client walks on a new site, if you're having new starters join your site, if you're, as we're discussing today, having casual workers on your site, I don't think it could possibly be a bad thing to have a reserve of safety work where, you know, 
on hand. And I think our site safety boxes do exactly that. They're, um, we have free 24 hour delivery, so you'll never be left high and dry without the right kit. Um, we're trying to make it as easy and convenient to have this, this safety workwear. So, you know, less accidents happen on site and less people aren't, uh, less people are going to work unprotected. That's terrific. So I, I will remind people, or I'll get you to remind people where the competition is, but where can people actually find WASP site safety, even those that don't want to take part in the competition? Yeah, of course. So you can find us at waspsitesafety.com. That's our website. And our Instagram handle is at waspsitesafety. Um, we're also, you know, often putting posters all around hoarding on construction sites, stickers everywhere. So you'll probably start seeing us around anyway. But if you're searching for us, it's waspsitesafety.com. That's fantastic. Marcus, it's been an absolute pleasure. Good luck with the competition. Good luck with the uh, with the business. Um, I, maybe I, I need to get a couple of those uh, site safety boxes to, to stack in my office as well, because guaranteed i've got bags and bags of ppe but whenever i turn up on site i always seem to be missing that one vital thing and it's exactly glasses right. or whatever it might be but uh, yeah. good luck with the competition and thanks for joining us on the show today perfect thank you very much for your time mark no problem um and there you are so uh, waspsitesafety.com to find out more about the company and at waspsitesafety over on instagram oh, excuse me over on instagram to find out how to enter that competition um and i can tell you now um, that Marcus has already given away the answer to the question, if you are paying attention. Axoft and Svantec are your high-end partners for noise, vibration, dust, and air quality systems, sensors, and software. To find out more, visit axoft.co.uk or call 01234 639 550. True story. More than 30 years ago, my former editor on the Plant Manager's Journal magazine, returned from a trip to the northeast of England and spoke enthusiastically about a company he'd just met. That company was called Thompson's of Prudhoe, and three decades later, I still look on admiringly. another fine piece of work by a very fine company indeed now speaking of companies in the northeast of england the miller gt series heralds a new era of unrivaled power and cutting edge intelligent coupler technology increasing job site safety machine versatility and productivity it's the added versatility that you need at the value you can afford to find out more visit millergroundbreaking.com from the northeast of England to France, as we say, au revoir to a motorway bridge.
What can I say? But sacre bleu and mon dieu. I don't know what either of those things mean, but it's all the French I've got at my disposal, I'm afraid. Two weeks ago, as you may recall, a building in Stevenage collapsed while undergoing demolition, spilling rubble out into the road and narrowly, narrowly missing a passing car. Well, work is now back underway. Things are apparently running a little more smoothly at Swingate House now. Sorry to interrupt the guy with the funny glasses, but if you're enjoying this video, please hit the like button as it helps our channel. Or, better still, share this video with a friend or a colleague. Thank you. Right, back to Beardy. Right, that should just about do us for today's show. Uh, before I depart, just a quick reminder that there's a whole heap of new video content over on our YouTube channel, which you can find using the link that I've just posted in the chat. Uh, we've also added a bunch of new podcast episodes too. Just go to the podcast platform of your choosing and search for Demolition News Radio. I'm going to roll the outro in just a second before leaping gazelle-like over into the chat to see what you're all saying today. If you can't stick around, please stay safe. Um, look after yourself, your family, your friends and your colleagues. Oh, excuse me. Bit of beard in my mouth. Um, before I do go, don't forget, a part of that, looking after yourself, your, fa your family, your friends, and your colleagues, make sure to hop on over to Instagram and search for at Wasp Site Safety. Answer the question that is currently in their story, and you could be in with a chance of winning one of their damn fine uh, site safety boxes. In the meantime, thanks for watching. If you do have the time, I will see you on the other side of this. Hey.